Yo, what's good, YouTube? We back with another banger. Today we got a Trap Lord Ross video, man. If y'all know Trap Lord Ross, he got somehow know all the information about everything. But I don't know how he know it. But we about to we about to check this. This a little little throwback to to the music I grew up on, I guess. We got the rise and fall of ASAP Mob. Now. If y'all know, Rocky had a run, crazy run. Ferg had a crazy run. Rest in peace, Yams, and everybody else, man. But, yeah, we're going to get right into this. If y'all not subscribed, hit subscribe right now. It's free. Just hit that red button. That's it. But, yeah, we're going to get right into this. It's a, a longer video, so we're going to check it out. Like, we still can't kick it. The Henny get killed, like, no, I can't sip it. You can get killed, like, it ain't no flipping. She hit my line, like, mm -mm, Kilo, you tripping. Hi, y'all, the rise and fall of ASAP Mob. Thanks to Evan Miranda for suggesting this video on Patreon. If you'd like to support this channel and have your say in the kind of things Ross covers, head on over to patreon.com slash traplawross. Thanks! Although ASAP Rocky might be the first name that you think of when you hear ASAP Mob, the name you should really think of is ASAP Yams. And no, I'm not talking about some kind of sweet potato delivery service. I'm talking about the visionary behind the meteoric rise and formation of this legendary rap crew. Yams is actually the one who dreamed up the ASAP moniker, which would of course be forever immortalized in every member of the crew's names, with them collectively being known as ASAP Mob and their label being known as ASAP Worldwide. Now, ASAP stands for a number of things. Mainly, always strive and prosper, an acronym which mob member ASAP Ferg would immortalize forever in the name of one of his albums. However, there are many other explanations of what the ASAP in ASAP mob actually means. And in fact, there's apparently That's so many thought, different man. versions of what ASAP stands for. According to Yams, Rocky once said that ASAP could stand for anything, so it might as well stand for acronym symbolizing any purpose. An explanation mm. which ASAP Yams himself described as gay as hell. His words, not mine. But let's jump back a bit, because it's easy in 2020 after the ASAP mob That's has achieved deep, so much to think that you know all of the ins and outs of this mega group. But the truth is, many people don't know the real history of the crew, much beyond the fact that Yams was indeed the visionary that was pushing it forward. And in the last few years, the mob has seemed much more fragmented than it has in the past. As recently as 2020, with fans witnessing an ugly public falling out between remaining members arguing about who is actually in the mob. And unfortunately, now in 2020, the ASAP mob simply is not what it used to be. It's less connected, less cohesive as a single unit, and to be honest, has essentially slid a long way down from where it was at its peak. But that's not to discount the many amazing and groundbreaking achievements that the ASAP mob and its members have made during their once in a lifetime meteoric rise Man, to was, So today, we're gonna go right enough, back to the beginning yeah, and take a look at the entire rise and fall of the that ASAP third mob. Room. It's crazy. Harley, Rocky 2, 2006, and a crazy. young ASAP Yams is trying to break his way into the rap game. And he does catch a break. He manages to land himself an internship with Duke the God of Diplomat Records and none other than the super violator himself, Jim Jones. This was a life-changing opportunity that would give ASAP Yams the chance to rub shoulders with rap game royalty at an early age. My first experience in the music industry is dealing with Jim Jones, being around him every day. You know what I mean? Like, he taught me everything I needed to know. I'll just, I'll, I'll just stay around on him and completely observed the whole scenery and I took Jim Jones aesthetic and applied it to myself to the point that I used to be at record label meetings and be like damn you know what you remind me of Jim Jones and shit. Yes, Yams was all up in the Dipset offices looking like a Jim Jones tribute act. But don't get me wrong, I assume that the gig interning for Jim Jones was no cakewalk. I assume his many duties included disposing of one of Jim's many Dutch guts, sweeping the office for wiretaps, <laughs> and separating his laundry into blood and everyday wear. Anyway, at this point, Yams truly had his feet under the table. In fact, he was even spotted in this area appearing in the background of a vlog with the wave god himself, Max B, flashing the cash. Free big avail. Apparently, through his passion and these experiences. During these years, ASAP Yams would become the ultimate hip-hop knowledge geek, who according to fellow member ASAP Bari, would sit at the computer for hours studying the rap game and its history. Which to me is crazy to hear, because it feels like me and ASAP Yams would actually have a lot in common. And much like what I do, ASAP Yams would eventually find a way of parlaying his ocean-deep knowledge of hip-hop into internet clout. 
eventually becoming prolific for running a hip hop themed Tumblr account called Real N Word Tumblr. And going under the pseudonym Inside Steve, Yams would post up swaggy throwback hip hop shit to his blog, putting the new generation of late noughties rap fans onto rare hip hop game from years gone by that they probably missed out on. Throwing up cool rare this. pictures like this one of Plies rocking a bust down, fitted cap chain, a pic of Max B holding his pet hamster, all these shots of highly questionable throwback R. Kelly and Aaliyah merch. Honestly, there's literally so much cool throwback hip hop content on Yams' Tumblr that I could probably make about 100 videos of it and change my channel name to Traplore Yams. But anyway, looking back at his time on Tumblr, Yams himself said he had a plan from the very beginning, knowing that eventually he would be able to leverage this hip hop cultural clout into something much bigger. But it would take quite some time for the perfect opportunity to come along. So meanwhile, behind the scenes, Yams would network hard in the hoods of Harlem, looking for allies to join his quest to build a hip hop empire. So it's around 2006 that ASAP Yams forms the ASAP Collective with fellow founder member ASAP Bari. At the time, Bari. Bari was a bit of a budding fashionista who Yams would describe as literally risking his life walking up and down the hood in skinny jeans, frequently getting beaten up by thugs on the block for dressing too wavy. Funny now he gets Bari, beaten up for um... different reasons. Anyway, Bari and Yams bonded over fashion, apparently Milan. spending a lot of their spare time in 2004 and 2005 running around the city looking for rare bathing ape clothes. And they were clicked up along with the third co-founder member of ASAP, ASAP Ills, who would act as the model for these budding trendsetters' new fashion fits. God, he's good looking, isn't he? Pauls. But anyway, hey, being yeah. the master networkers that they were, the ASAP mob would continue to grow slowly but surely over the years that followed, adding new members and evolving from a trio of fashion-focused trendsetters to a fully blown collective of pretty mother effers from all different kinds of creative disciplines. Rappers, producers, music video directors, fashion designers, and even they bikers. They made a team, they created a Hell, team. I want Everybody two large people that's the less same, than one hour in a single city. Do you think I could you? join the ASAP mob? Yams, come on. Some of the most prominent members who ended up joining around this time include the likes of ASAP Ferg, a bona fide trap lord who would fit right into the crew from the start with interests in both fashion and rapping. In fact, ASAP Ferg's father famously had a printing business, with his pops apparently being responsible for designing the original Bad Boy logo for P. Diddy, with Ferg even going Crazy. as far to say as that he thinks he is the baby from that bad boy logo. Crazy. Crazy. You had ASAP and another rapper with a fashion connection, who actually in the early days had his own clothing line called Merino Infantry, which apparently Rocky was messing with heavily in the early stages of the mob's recruitment. You've got the amazing story of ASAP Lou or Lou Banger, who actually became ASAP Rocky's assistant after being pulled out of the crowd at a show because he was wiling out so hard they decided to bring him on the team. Like Lou was around at the early stages. Yo, shout out to homie right here, y'all fuck with you. Can he come on stage? Yeah. After a while, he just became one of everybody. Like, he was always so helpful and shit. Like, if niggas ever needed him, he was there. You got ASAP Nast, Lacoste enthusiast, and fellow rapper who is actually ASAP Rocky's cousin. There's ASAP P on the boards, but don't let it fool you. Piss stain samplers aside, this team producer has made beats for some of the biggest tracks in the mob's catalog, like their big early posse cut bath salts. There's ASAP Relly, a lower profile, but more fashion focused member of the crew, who went on to model for Rick Owens and other big name brands. We got ASAP Twelvey, another rapping member, who apparently Twelvey. got his name after growing up around a whole bunch of blood members. They would apparently use the phrase 212 to refer to conversating and being a master networker who seemed to be cool with the bloods without actually being a member, he began going by the nickname 12 e and eventually ASAP 12 e We got ASAP Ty Beats, another team beat maker responsible for classic ASAP hits like Rocky's big breakout shoot Pacer. Ty Beats, not to be confused with ASAP Ty Y, who originally got noticed by the mob either. as a biker rather than a rapper with Ty Y being a big name in the streets of Harlem, mostly being the result of his frankly terrifying bike life movement as well as other later rap projects. Projects. Tell you what, my mum would not let me hang out with those bike life dudes. ASAP Ty Y is out here trying to break every bone in his body ASAP. Now, there are many other names that have been associated or affiliated with the ASAP mob. ASAP Puffs, ASAP Gelino, ASAP Josh, ASAP Lotto, ASAP Frumps, ASAP Stinks. I made those last two up. But anyway, this video isn't going to be a where are they now like I did for my old odd future video. I'm not necessarily interested in what every single ASAP member got up to during their career, especially considering the fact that a lot of them are more focused on fashion than music. And as you may have been able to tell from watching some of my videos, not the biggest fashionista. So with that in mind, this video is going to be a clear rise and fall focusing mainly on the core members of ASAP that had musical success. And I'm sure at this point you may have very well noticed I've missed out one very big and obvious name Rocky. so far, ASAP Rocky, aka ASAP Meal Ticket, the star member who oozed so much source and confidence that within only a few years of publicly pushing his music would become one of the hottest commodities the rap game had ever seen, attracting seven figure checks for the mob and its members.
Rocky and his cousin ASAP Nast grew up dabbling in the streets. But when Rocky was around 13 years old, his brother was tragically killed in Harlem, leading a young Rocky to the realization that he should take the rap game far more seriously than his prospects in the streets. And so eventually in 2007, Rocky would join the ASAP mob when he was around 19 years old, apparently meeting ASAP Yams through ASAP Bari. Anywho, after years of rapping, experimenting, and trying to find his sound, it was in July 2011 that Rocky would burst onto the rap scene with his big introductory song, Purple Swag. It's the perfect song to start with, and it really set the tone for ASAP Rocky and the rest of the mob going forward. The Texas chopped and screwed sound with the image of a bunch of lean drinking fashionistas led to this song and this crew quickly becoming a staple of New York street culture. The momentum behind this song spurred Rocky and the mob to create a music video for Purple Swag, which itself quickly picked up steam. The video featured ASAP mob members extensively and was followed up in August 2011 by ASAP Rocky's hey, so. breakout hit song, Peso. This was an absolute smash and essentially the song that catapulted Rocky to the mainstream. In fact, a lot of Rocky's success around this point can be directly attributed to ASAP Yams. Because let's not forget that his Tumblr blog was absolutely popping. And as I said before, he always had a vision of something bigger and now was the time to put it to work. So he would use that platform to extensively promote Rocky's music and his early shows. But he did this without it being immediately clear to the readers that Yams and Rocky were clicked up. With this apparently being ASAP Yams' plan all along. What did you think like when you started your Tumblr? What was your uh, expectations with that? My, my Tumblr was all hustle. It, it was a marketing plan. I ain't no blogging ass motherfucker. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I, do, I, I developed a plan. I'm like, let me start a fake, a fake blog that people don't know is ran by me and shit like that. And I'm gonna put Rocky on since none of these other bitch ass blogs gonna put me on. So Peso blows up and off the back of that, Smart. ASAP Rocky's name is ringing in the streets of the entire rap industry. Drake co-signed Rocky and invited him onto his club Paradise tour. You know, I'm, I'm trying to earn the right to call myself ASAP Drizzy one day. <laughs> off the back of all of this momentum, Rocky he Rocky ruined everybody, bro. love ASAP at the end of October 2011. This tape was considered by many to be an instant classic. It was beyond its years in sound and tone and you can throw on tracks from that thing now and some of them sound like they could have been made in 2020. And while this project didn't end up hitting the charts, at this point the mainstream labels could tell that Rocky had that star power. And before you knew it, they were beating down his door trying to sign him to a deal. ASAP, sorry. So in the end, Rocky signs a $3 million deal with RCA distributed Polo Grounds Music. And apparently this $3 million deal includes money for his newly formed record label ASAP Worldwide, which he had started with ASAP Yams. They apparently co-owned this and reportedly of that $3 million deal, 1.7 million was for Rocky's solo career and 1.3 million was earmarked to fund their new company, ASAP Worldwide, oh. who would develop ASAP Mob projects. With Yams himself expressing an ambition for this company to be the next Def Jam and Yams himself taking a very hands-on approach to managing the output of the members. And since Rocky had already released one body of work prior to even signing this deal, the pressure was kind of off when it came to releasing music. The fans had a full-length project to chew on and so Rocky and the mob spent the next few months chasing the bag, performing in front of slash fighting with their own fans. And eventually, when it came time to drop more music, ASAP Rocky stood to the side and let his team shine, with the big debut release from ASAP Worldwide being the ASAP Mob posse album Lords Never Worry, dropping in August 2012. This was led by the single Bath Salt featuring Flatbush Zombies and an ASAP Rocky zombies. direct music video. Unfortunately, this project got generally too. negative reviews, with Pitchfork giving it a pretty pitiful 4.9, with the reviewer doing a lot of what the audience were doing at the time and pointing to Ferg and Rocky as the real standout members of the crew, as well as dropping some shade on the mob's poor selection of beats. But the most important thing about this project to me was the fact that it included a little song called Woke, the soon to be huge breakout single for next in the line to the ASAP throne, ASAP Ferg. Now, we all know that Ferg's work is a bang. I mean, who hasn't found themselves in a packed rave screaming at the top of their lungs, put it in work! Put him in, the in fact, it was actually around this time that Rocky seemed to perfectly predict the success of ASAP Ferg's future music career, speaking in the noisy documentary about him called Suddenly. Ferg was in student mode for a year straight, and now it's his time to shine. Ferg is gonna be huge, mark my words, man. The star power of Ferg was very quickly recognized, but not just by the fans or reviewers. And by January 2013, ASAP Ferg signs his own joint venture record deal with RCA Polo Grounds 2, quickly going on to drop a music video for work, more importantly followed by the remix, which is huge. Coming along with verses from fellow ASAP member ASAP Rocky, Bucket Hat- Bro, no cap. ASAP. No cap, ASAP. Ma, remind me of today's concrete. Like, they got the same vibe almost like, like, 
Yachty is rocky. And everybody under him is hard. They got some people that make music, some people that, like, it's just a group of, like, people. Like, they just cool. They they do stuff. I, like, they, they real similar to me, in my opinion. Schoolboy Q, Macaroni Connoisseur French Montana, and Poor Investment Connoisseur Trinidad James. And with all this momentum, that landed work on the Billboard Top 100, admittedly dead last at 100. But he's still one for one on Billboard, baby, so that don't count for nah, nothing. Work, work even eventually went double platinum, so you yeah, know Ferg got that bag. Off the success of work, Ferg announces his upcoming debut album, Trap Lord, but not before Rocky's much anticipated debut studio album, Long Live ASAP. This drops in January 2013, Bangers only days on after that. Ferg signed his deal and dropped his work video, and with all of these amazing ASAP mob projects flying around in 2013, it was truly the mob's year, as ASAP Rocky's debut album immediately debuts at number one on Billboard, selling around 139,000 first week. Led by his initial single Goldie, which had been buzzing since mid-2012, more importantly, ASAP Rocky's debut album included his follow-up hit commercial single, Fucking Problems, which featured Drake, it. 2 Chains, and Kendrick Lamar of all people. Fucking Problems peaked at number eight on the Billboard charts and even got nominated for the best rap song at the Grammys that year. The track eventually went five times platinum, five but the mob weren't done platinum. winning yet, oh no. Because fresh off the back of the success of the Work remix, in August 2013, ASAP Ferg finally dropped his Trap Lord album, which peaks at number nine on Billboard, selling around 32K first week. And from there, the mob continued to dominate. On October 2013, an ASAP mob lineup of Rocky, Ferg, Nast, 12 e and Ant do a cypher together at the BET Hip Hop Awards, I that but Weird too. has been widely scrubbed from YouTube despite being absolute fire. And from here, ASAP Nast was on YouTube momentum, anymore? dropping the song and music video for Trillmatic featuring Method Man, a track which was also this was a hit by too, boy. Now, this is a much more boom bap old head style of rap than Rocky and Ferg's output, but in many ways, it's kind of a refreshing change and good addition to an already diverse that. portfolio of different rap styles in the ASAP lineup. In fact, for a brief moment, it looked like ASAP Nast was destined for the same type of success that Rocky and Ferg would receive, but sadly, his debut album never materialized. But to his credit, he did go on to do an iconic collab collaboration with British grime legend Skepta, the track Ladies Hit Squad, which is a UK favourite and well worth a listen if you Americans have I never not. Heard but the record Ladies Hit Squad is actually one of five ASAP Skepta link-ups, which are always fire. You got Praise the Lord with Rocky, It Ain't Safe with Bari, Ghost Ride with Rocky and Nast, and Put That On My Set with Rocky from the Cozy Tapes Volume 1. Go check them all out if you haven't. Hell, he might as well be ASAP Skepta at this point. So from here, Nast kind of faded into the background a little bit and begun to play his position. And from here on out, it seemed like the majority of The Shine would be going towards Rocky and Ferg. A debut group album called Lord or L-O-R-D was supposedly in the works around this time too, with several members dropping songs that were even touted to be on the project, including ASAP 12E's Xcape, Glock Rivers, and the posse cut Hella Hose that featured Rocky Ferg, 12 and Nast. But in September 2014, ASAP Yam said that that project has actually been shelved when asked about it on his blog. But if that was disappointing, fans and the mob themselves couldn't have possibly prepared themselves for the enormous tragedy that lurked around the corner. In January 2015, ASAP Rocky and several other people were hanging out at a crib belonging to ASAP Yams and ASAP Lou. At a certain point, Lou approached Rocky to say that he couldn't wake ASAP Yams up. And when they went into his room to turn him over, they immediately knew the worst. Unfortunately, ASAP Yams had passed away long before his time at the age of 26, leaving the mob, its members, the hip hop and music community at large absolutely devastated. Initially, it was unclear exactly what had caused Yams's passing, with Rocky initially denying that Yams's passing had had anything to do with drugs, telling fans that what had happened was the result of Yams' sleep apnea, which had caused asphyxiation and pulmonary aspiration. Rocky had said that this was something that Yams had struggled with in the past. However, the medical examination would eventually record his death as accidental acute mixed drug intoxication, the result of a mixture of benzodiazepines and opioids. Unfortunately to some, this wasn't a surprise, because Yams was infamous for his drug taking, even going as far as to have a subgroup for him and his buddies that he would get lit with called the Blackout Boys. In fact, their Blackout Boys hoodie that they were selling at one point has gone on to become an incredibly rare grail for streetwear hunters all over the world. In some ways, Yams was wearing his party lifestyle as a badge of pride. In fact, even in that earlier Suddenly documentary about Rocky's come up on Noisy, Yams was depicted as being in love with Lee, regularly falling asleep off that drank so often that ASAP Lou and others would often be forced to try and wake him up using an air horn. You got that purple stuff, you got that heady stuff. Yeah. I'm about to be thrown for like two days. <laughs> mm -hmm. We at the crib, let's go. Yeah. Wake up, Yams. 
That's sad, bro. They think they think that's funny, bro. That's not funny, bro. Bro, killing himself, man. Y'all laughing. He killing himself, man. Rest in peace, Yams. Gotta handle this shit. They start sleeping on shit. Before his tragic passing, Yams, for a brief period, was seeking help for his addiction and spent time in rehab, elaborating on his experience there in August 2014 in a post from his blog, saying that his drug addiction had previously caused him to have seizures and he had gotten to the point where he would need to take eight Xanax bars just to feel anything, ultimately saying that he was clean as of June the 26th, 2014, but sadly, as we now know, Yams was unable to stay clean and suffered the unfortunate fate that we see all too often in hip hop these days. Just like we've seen with the likes of Lil Peep, Juice World, Mac Miller, and so many others, talented artists with a lifetime of creative gifts to give, unfortunately not even making it to 30 30 as a direct result of addiction. Often leaving a creative legacy littered with clues as to the destructive path they were on, but unfortunately it is sometimes just too late or not possible to prevent a tragedy like this from happening. Rest Yams had taken his crew so far from nothing to the very top, but in many ways in 2015 when he passed it felt like things were really only just beginning. And really we can only imagine just how far Yams would have taken himself and his crew had we not lost him so early. I think he really would have made ASAP Worldwide the new Def Jam, but it's at least comforting to know that during his lifetime he got to see his creation ASAP go from an idea to a worldwide staple in hip-hop and earning him the recognition and attention of the true goats in hip hop history. Yams' legacy is proof that he was a true visionary who had so many more gifts to give the music scene, but sadly, we will never get to see. After the death of ASAP Yams, it seemed like ASAP Rocky's music begun to take a slightly more dark and experimental tone. He unveiled his sophomore album in 2015, At Long Last ASAP, with a front cover honouring ASAP Yams depicting Rocky with Yams' iconic facial birthmark. This album featured slightly more experimental tracks for Rocky like LSD, a track about Rocky's newfound love of Satan's psychedelic stamps, or the more poignant track Every Day, which featured an unusual array of collaborators in the form of Rod Stewart, Miguel, and Mark Ronson, as well as an incredible music video that depicts an aging and fat ASAP Rocky coping with the late stages of his fame, getting endless plastic surgery, and eventually ending up dead floating face down in his pool. A fate one can only dream of, really. This artistic experiment did pay off, and at long last ASAP did debut at number one, moving 116,000 units. A slightly smaller debut than his previous album, but still a big W. And from here, I personally feel like the tone really shifted when it comes to ASAP Rocky's artistry, as his music began to get more and more experimental. Who knows, maybe he ran out 3-6 Mafia songs to rip off, but to me it's clear that he stopped being that pretty and that jiggy motherfucker and instead became that pretentious motherfucker boring's what I'm rapping. And this was seemingly dialed up to 100 in the years that followed, with Rocky's highly experimental testing album in 2018 being a good example of Rocky continuing to experiment with these new sound elements. Testing, you know, because he's testing new sounds. Fucking deep, mate, deep. Rocky's experimentation clearly alienated some fans, now, Rocky did and the release of testing hard, saw Rocky suffering a slightly larger dip in commercial performance, with testing landing at number 4 on Billboard and moving 75k units first week. But that album did include the That's track Praise the Lord, bad. with Skepta that is probably the best UK-US rap crossover in history, and one of my favourite songs of all time, which I know completely contradicts everything I just said about hating on Rocky's artistic angle, but I don't give a shit, Rocky's a legend forever, whatever. But the thing is though, it's there in 2015 when Rocky starts getting more experimental, alienating some of the pretty mother flippers that fell in love with ASAP in the first place, that we see ASAP Ferg coming for that title of the prettiest and jiggiest mother fricker. Because between 2015 and 2020, we kind of saw Rocky staying at the same level and experimenting with new directions and sounds that were clearly creatively fulfilling for him. But over that same period of time, we saw ASAP Ferg transform from loyal soldier putting in that work into big ASAP, the next member of the crew, set to rise to the very top of the rap game, ready to claim a crown in his own right. And for real, Ferg was out here making some serious industry moves. In February 2015, dropping his Dope Walk music video, a track from his Ferg Forever mixtape that featured a viral dance and was made up entirely of iPhone footage shot at New York Fashion Week, including cameos from numerous big name models and celebrities. And the video essentially starts with Ferg FaceTiming professional supermodel and boner maker Cara Delevingne, who the song mentions extensively, and we get to see her kind of reacting to the music video in real time in FaceTime. It's not my favorite song, but it is an enormous flex. So Ferg 
Ferg deserves credit for that. And all of this clout builds up towards April 2016, when Ferg drops his second studio album, Always Strive and Prosper, ASAP baby. This landed at number eight on Billboard, selling 35,000 units, only a marginal improvement on his previous album, but an improvement. Its main single is New Level featuring Future, which did a hell of a new sitting over 89 million views on YouTube today and a whopping 137 million on Spotify. Meanwhile, other mob members are making moves in their own right. ASAP Ty Wai, who had only really been a big name in the bike scene, begun to also rap as part of the collective, dropping songs like Chamber Lock and Oh Well, all leading up to his debut mixtape Best Kept Secret in April 2016. The remaining mob members also complete their first compilation album, The Cozy Tapes Volume 1 Friends, dropping on October 2016. The cover art depicting a baby ASAP Yams, with the project naturally being dedicated to his memory. And let's not forget that the banging lead single off of that project is of course Yamborghini High, another ode to Yams. The Cozy Tapes landed at 13 on Billboard, selling 21k first week, and charting in just under 10 countries, a good indication of the mob's remaining international appeal. Especially considering the fact that this wasn't really a commercial indication of the mob's remaining In New Zealand is insane. Especially considering the fact that this wasn't really a commercial project and it wasn't slammed with radio hits. They New they Zealand that rappers. Up volume two, two they got New Zealand drill. Which managed to surpass volume one, going number six on Billboard and moving 41k first week. Meanwhile, Ferg was still striving by dropping his project, Still Striving, which went eight on Billboard and eventually went gold. But more importantly, it was that album that contained that his latest banger, Plain Jane, a love letter to diamond lacking presidential Rolexes. Peaking at number 26 on Billboard, Plain Jane eventually went four times platinum. By far, the biggest commercial success of Ferg's career at the time. That However, unfortunately, hard. this release would come out at a bit of a challenging time for the ASAP mob, as only a month before, one of their members found themselves in pretty hot water, for, to be honest, pretty understandable reasons. In my opinion, the fall of the ASAP mob truly started with ASAP Bari, aka get your fucking hands off me ASAP. The mastermind, big air quotes there, behind v -Lone, one of the least inspiring fashion Bari designs I've like ever seen, suffered an enormous and embarrassing fall from grace beginning July 2017, uh, when a video emerged depicting ASAP no, Bari sexually assaulting a woman in a hotel room in London. I obviously won't show you the clip due to YouTube's community guidelines, as well as the fact that whoever filmed it kind of committed a crime too, but essentially what we see is ASAP Bari bursting into a hotel room and interrupting a woman and his assistant naked in bed. At this point, Bari yells, you fucked my assistant, now you're going to fuck with me. When she said no, Bari pulled the blankets off her, exposing her naked body without consent to around 10 other people that were there before following her into the bathroom. He then allegedly threw her naked into the hotel hallway and had the hotel manager call the police. Bari was hit with sexual assault charges in London where this happened, with him eventually pleading guilty, being forced to pay restitution to his victim and have a restraining order. Thing is, before this all went down, v -Lone was one of the most popping brands in rap. Everyone was rocking and rapping about v -Lone, and Bari even had a v -Lone Nike collaboration deal on the table. But after the sexual assault came to light, all of that went away. And Nike are the last people that are gonna be rocking with creepy shit like this, so you best believe ASAP Bari's deal was dropped immediately. From here, many people, hot, including right? Rocky himself, seemed to distance themselves from ASAP Bari and his behavior, with Rocky going as far as to change lyrics to one of his songs on stage to call Bari a bitch. This left v -Lone very much on the shelf of high fashion, forcing Bari to go on to collaborate with artists rather than big companies like Nike, with v -Lone even stooping as low to do a collaboration with Nav. Ugh, I swear the only thing worse than a rise and fall is going from Nike to Nav. But I suppose you take what you can get when you're a convicted sex offender. Anyway, from here, despite Bari bringing down the tone of the ASAP mob several hundred pegs, other members continued pushing and striving, releasing their own projects. ASAP 12E dropped 12, the album, in August 2017, Ty Y dropped Troubles of the World in 2018, and Project Rockstar in 2019, and 12E came back after a three year hiatus, dropping two mixtapes in 2020, Before Noon in April, and Noon Young in October. And of course, in 2019, and 20, Ferg dropped floor seats one and two respectively, eventually even beating his own record on Plain Jane, scoring a number 19 hit with the help of Nicki Minaj and Made in TYO, the track Move Your Hips. But for all of that great musical output and momentum, it seemed as if discontent was brewing in this fragmented crew, as we'd see in a public feud in 2020 that would truly serve as the lowest point for the ASAP mob. Now, I know a lot of ASAP stands are going to have an issue with the title of this, but let me make it clear. When I say that ASAP mob fell, I mean that as a cohesive group with a clear direction of where they were going, they really seemed to just lose their momentum and their identity. 
falling from where they were seemingly as a rock solid staple of modern day rap crews. When Yams was leading the charge, it truly felt like the crew was unstoppable on a sharp upward trajectory that seemed like it was never going to end. But by 2020, there was clear discontent between its members. From 2018, Thurg in particular had been on a run of a lifetime. After spending years playing his position in the shadows, second place to Rocky, it was finally Thurg's time. And aside from the hit songs that we had already discovered, he was getting that bag, appearing in ads for Tiffany's and showing up prominently in an Adidas World Cup commercial providing narration. Creativity is the answer. Never play on repeat. Put your own spin on things. Let a new wave begin. But things weren't all good in ASAP Mob. At the start of 2019, seemingly out of nowhere, ASAP Ant announced that he was leaving the group to focus on his solo work. But more sensationally, in September 2020, members begun to feud publicly. With ASAP Ills. That's what I don't get to. Why do, why do, why do artists feel like they gotta leave the group to like, be so like y'all could be solo and be in the group. Like, I don't get that. Like you could still make music with them and make music by yourself. I don't get why you feel like you got to leave the group to be solo. Like, unless it's really some beef in there, like why you gotta, you know what I'm saying? But hey. Instagram to say that Ferg had been kicked out of the group. Specifically dissing him, saying that he's burnt out, his songs are dumb trash, and he can't make anthems anymore. I mean, that's a bit rich coming from ASAP Ills, the model of the group. Closest thing he would get to a hit record is wearing one as a necklace. But in even more embarrassing and snaky moves, Ills went on to share screenshotted private DMs with Thurg. Berg, who was reaching out trying to get to the bottom of what was even happening. And to make things worse, at this point, Rape Sap Bari piped up to support Ilz's position. I mean, imagine letting this scumbag Bari stay in ASAP, meanwhile you're kicking out Ferg, the most talented remaining member. ASAP Nas denied that Ferg had been kicked out on Twitter, correctly identifying this whole situation as embarrassing and unnecessary. Ferg sort of addressed this with lyrics on his song, Big ASAP, saying, how you go and kick a leader of ASAP out? Which some suggested meant that he was still in or leading the mob, but also could be interpreted as him just being simply shocked that these clowns would have the gall to kick out pretty much one of the best members. Ultimately, it's still not entirely clear whether or not Ferg is truly ASAP. His YouTube account today displays simply as Ferg, which might be an indication that he's left or the mob has disbanded. But then again, his Spotify does still claim the ASAP moniker, as well as going on to say to Ebro on Hot 97 that Ferg not being ASAP ain't a thing. Is not in the ASAP mob? Is that a thing? No, that's not a thing at all. It's not well, a thing. You mean Ebro I mean, in the I, future? I, 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 I am the ASAP mob, like, I mean, who's been waving his flag, you know, for the past couple years? Mm. You know, you can't you can't spell ASAP without saying ASAP for it. In my opinion, it was this incident that was truly the rock bottom of ASAP Mob. For the fans that had ridden with the ASAP Mob the entire journey, from the day ASAP Yams had introduced us to it on his blog, it was heartbreaking to see this crew turn on each other in such a petty way. And at this point, I don't personally believe there's much of a future for the ASAP Mob as a cohesive group at all. The group did fall off, but that's not to say that all of the individual members did, or that they won't go Facts. on to do great that's what I just said. Future. But ASAP Mob, as we knew it from those glory days, of being led by ASAP Yams and his vision are long gone. A relic of the past in hip hop, which I and I hope many other fans are honored to have even been able to witness and contribute to. So on that note, I just want to end the video saying thank you to ASAP Yams for all of the incredible art that you were able to give the world under your guidance. And unfortunately, we can only imagine just how incredible the music scene would be if, if you were he still was here the, today. If Yams was here fans. during the whole drill, drill rise. Thank you for watching and peace out. Rest easy, man. All right, y'all, man. We gonna, uh... Shout out the supporters on... Yeah, we don't need to see that. We gonna, uh... We gonna close it out there. Yeah, that was the rise and fall of ASAP Mob. It's a little bit longer video. You know, I'm, I'm seeing... I'm watching stuff that I like to watch. So I'm gonna give y'all opinions on the stuff that I really will watch if y'all wasn't here with me. But y'all here with me, you get what I'm saying? But if you made it this far in the video, I need y'all to uh to comment. Comment Kobe. You made it this far in the video, comment Kobe. And um
I need y'all to subscribe, hit the like button, share it, follow the YouTube, subscribe to YouTube, follow the Instagram, follow the TikTok, and I'm going to catch y'all on the next one, man. Peace. Like, we still can't kick it. The Henny get killed, like, no, I can't sip it. You could get killed, like, it ain't no living. She hit my line, like, mm -mm, Kilo, you tripping. She clocking my body. I can't put my trust in no thotty. 